You're listening to Men of Abundance, episode 107. This is part two of Side Hustle Week. Today we're talking with Nick Loper of Side Hustle Nation. Welcome to Men of Abundance, the podcast for those looking to level up their lives by hanging out with some of the greatest leaders and established professionals in our community, living a life of integrity, honor, and the abundance mentality. Prepare to pay it forward with your host, former army medic turned lifestyle entrepreneur, Wally Carmichael. What's up, what's up, Men of Abundance? I am Wally Carmichael, your host of the Men of Abundance podcast, the Pay It Forward community. Today is part two of Side Hustle Week here at Men of Abundance, and today we are having a conversation with Nick Loper. Now, we've had this conversation with Nick already before. It is originally episode 90, but I'm reposting it here today so that I can keep up with this theme of Side Hustle Week. And today we are talking with Nick because... Nick is the host of the Side Hustle podcast, and he refers to his audience as Side Hustle Nation. And you can check him out at SideHustleNation.com. We're going to get much more into the conversation in just a minute. But before we do, as usual, I want to give you the opportunity to be abundant in your life today and pay it forward by sharing Men of Abundance with everybody you come in contact with. You can do that by either sharing the link, menofabundance.com, or if you're listening to this on a podcast player, either iTunes or Android, whatever it is you're listening on, there's usually a button, three little dots or three lines. You click on that, a drop-down menu comes down, and you just click on Share Episode or Share the Podcast. Share it on Facebook Messenger, share it in a text message, share it in the email, whatever it is that you want to do, share Men of Abundance. And the reason why I say that so often is because at this point I have paid for zero marketing to get the word out about Men of Abundance. And last I checked, we're in 58 different countries. That is thanks to all of you who have either shared the episode, left a rating and review, Or even shared one of the episodes that I posted at our Men of Abundance fan page on Facebook. Just search Men of Abundance on Facebook and the fan page will pop up. You can share any one of those episodes. And speaking of iTunes reviews, every time somebody leaves a review on iTunes, that further boosts Men of Abundance in the search engines on iTunes anyway. I know that for a fact. And right now we have 39 reviews and I read every single one of them and I greatly appreciate every single bit of the feedback, positive or negative, and most of it has been very positive and I truly appreciate that. The latest review is from The Moyle, Dan Moyle. The Moyle says, a journey of reflection, humor, and poignancy. Wally takes his Men of Abundance listeners on a journey of reflection, humor, and poignancy with his interviews. I love to listen to them, so I was humbled and excited to have the opportunity to talk to this great guy. (laughs) I appreciate that more. It's not just another leadership podcast. It's an adventure in humanity. I love the gut check moment discussions. Men of Abundance is a must listen for anyone who takes leadership and stewardship of others to heart. Dan, I greatly appreciate that, and it was my pleasure to have that conversation with you. All right, now on to what you came here for. Let me get into this conversation with Nick. And as I said, I've already introduced him to Men of Abundance at one point in time, but just briefly, Nick is an author, entrepreneur, and a lifelong student in the game of business. He's currently the chief side hustler at SideHustleNation.com. You're definitely going to want to go check that out. It's a growing community and resource for aspiring and part-time entrepreneurs. And that's what this Side Hustle Week is all about, is the part-time entrepreneur who maybe eventually wants to make their business a full-time, but right now it's just a side hustle or you're getting ready to start a side hustle. Nick is also the host of the Side Hustle Show podcast, brilliant podcast. I love listening to it. He's got some great interviews on there, amazing ideas, and we're going to talk about that in this conversation. Men of Abundance, it is my pleasure to once again introduce you to Mr. Nick Loper. Nick, welcome to Men of Abundance. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Wally. How are you? I am amazing. Where are you at in the world? Uh, about 45 minutes east of San Francisco, out here in the Bay Area suburbs. I have been to San Francisco, but it was many, many years ago. I was a young man. My grandmother lived in Sacramento, and we drove from Phoenix to Sacramento to to spend some time with her. And while we were there, we drove down. And at the time, you could still drive down the um, 
what is it, the red brick road that they had there? I don't know if you can still uh, do that. Oh, on uh, Lombard Street? I guess. That was so long ago, I don't remember. But I remember going <laughs> okay. down that road. It's really steep, and it's windy, and it's just these red bricks that you go down. And from what I understand, they had closed that off to tourists. I guess you can't go through there anymore. Yeah, we still see cars driving down there every now and again, so I think maybe they, maybe they reopened it. I must have got some bad information or they reopened it. <laughs> but I did. I like San Francisco. It was so cool. There, as a young man, anyway, there was so much going on. It was so much hustle and bustle. And coming from Phoenix, I had never really been to a big city like that. And now you're just hanging out on the beach. Now I'm hanging out on the beach out here in, in Hawaii, absolutely. So, you know, I like to start the show out, Nick, pretty much the way I start out just about every morning and that is with an attitude of gratitude what do you have to be grateful for today i'm grateful to kind of have control over my own calendar and you know get to work on projects that i think are fun and exciting and challenging and that's kind of what keeps me going every day yeah and you have a lot going on i've been to your website quite a few times i listen to your podcast uh, side hustle and i'm just amazed uh, at all of the content and all the information that you put out. And, I, you know, being in the space, be, being a podcaster for the last f- almost five months now, and I started out with a three-day-a-week show, and now I'm down to a one-day-a-week show, as it was suggested to me by many other uh, podcasters and mentors. And even one-day-a-week show is a lot of content when I'm doing my podcast and my blog and social media and everything. I see everything you have going on, and it just totally blows my mind. Well, I only try and do one show a week, and it is a challenge. If there's, you know, even though the final product may only be half an hour of audio, there's, you know, four or five hours that goes into that. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. So, before we get started here on the show, I talked a little bit about you, and you know what we're talking about here today. But I really want to hear it from you. And here on Men of Abundance, we like to get to know the man behind the abundance. And, you know, there's so many shows out there that talk business and entrepreneurship. uh, And, you know, I don't want to take away from any of those guys. So I really just want to get to know who is Nick and, you know, what kind of drives you to get to this point. I don't know. I think at the heart of it is, you know, a guy who has tried a lot of different things. And most of those have flopped. But thankfully, a few of them have worked. Um, My... I guess my foray into the entrepreneurial world was, I mean, even before this, like I was the kid, like trying to sell baseball cards at the end of the sidewalk and sell candy at summer camp stuff. So they were, maybe the, the seed had been planted earlier, but kind of yeah, as, as a quote adult, you know, where it really got started, where it really got bit by the entrepreneurial bug was when I took this house painting internship in college. They called it an internship. Really what they did was, kind of assign you a zip code, assign you a territory, and say, all right, it's your job to go out and paint as many houses as you can uh, over the course of the summer. And of course, they you know give you training on how to actually estimate a job and how to hire people and how to, and how to get this done. But then you're kind of on your own. And I remember this moment when uh, this is in kind of like a, a rainy Seattle March evening. I drive out to my territory and you know i've driven around a couple different subdivisions and i'm it's like just cold and dark and gross and i'm sitting in my truck and trying to psych myself out because i'm you know, ultimately realizing look nothing is going to happen until you go and knock on that first door cold calling was how we were expected to get business and it was just really really intimidating but it was kind of like that that moment of, of, of realization like you know, you are 100% in control right now. And so I finally got up the nerve to go, you know, knock on that first door. And I think, thankfully, nobody was home. So I was like, okay, that wasn't so bad. And you go on to the next and the next. And it, you know, eventually you you get leads and you get jobs. And it was just, um, you know, kind of <laughs> that first moment of like, well, you really got to be the captain of your own ship. And I think that was really important for me to see at an early age. It's never been more true in, in this economy. That is very true. And But at a very early age, I was doing stuff like that. I remember one of the earliest times, well, one, I did that little candy thing where this is really creepy, actually. I had this conversation <laughs> recently. I was a young man, and this guy, I don't know how I get started with it, but this guy in a white van you know, would basically pick all of us kids up. He would take us out to a neighborhood, not in our neighborhood, because wasn't nobody buying candy and stuff in our neighborhood, but take us to some little bit wealthier 
neighborhood, drop us off on a corner and say, meet me back here in an hour. And we would, all, you know, you go that way, you go that way, you go that way. And we would all meet back there and we go door to door selling candy. And then we get back into a creepy white van. I think about it now and there's no way in the world I would allow my kids to do something like that. Yeah, but this sounds super shady. T- super shady, right? And we did get commission. We, we got paid off of it for those of us who didn't eat our product. Uh, quite <laughs> frankly. <laughs> but then the other thing was, was I, I actually lived in a trailer park. And the, the park manager was told everybody that they had to trim their trees. And they were going to charge a flat fee for a guy to come around and trim the trees that each individual lot owner you know that lived there had tenant had to pay it when i found that out i was like well shoot i'll just go charge five dollars less and i went door to door with my stepdad's chainsaw electric chainsaw plugged into their electricity <laughs> and trimmed these people's trees had no idea what i was doing but i did you know i saw the first couple of trees that were done i can do that and then you know went door to door doing that so you know, I think I kind of got introduced to that cold call early on and kind of got over that fear real early. I love it. I love the chainsaw story. <laughs> it's, I just thought of it when you were talking about painting houses. It just popped into my head. I forgot about that for so many years. Amazing. So, you know, how did you get up to the point to where you're now, you know, got got the podcast going, got so much information about the side hustle and you know, get all that going? Well, it's a process. So you're looking at really now 15 plus years of entrepreneurial trial and error. And I think anything is kind of in evolution and picking what's next doesn't mean picking what's forever. So the the stuff that I'm doing today would, would look completely foreign to, you know, the nick of even just five years ago. So it's kind of been in constant... Uh, motion but so I had the painting business um, which was really under you know another company's kind of umbrella Um, after school or even you know while I was still in school began kind of an online business in the world of affiliate marketing Mm -hmm. and so that was really the you know the first kind of online side hustle my first official side hustle when I was working my corporate job that was a footwear comparison shopping site. So it would aggregate the catalogs from Zappos and Amazon and all these other online stores and tell you where to find the best price on your next pair of shoes. You know, hardly a, a world-changing <laughs> business idea, but it was effective for, for many years. And that was the vehicle that let me quit my job. During the time that I was running that full-time, I, you know, kind of learned the lesson the hard way you know, to diversify your, your income streams, diversify your traffic sources and stuff like that. And so, you know, it was always kind of on the hunt for the next the next business idea and all these different side projects. Uh, most of those flopped, but a couple are still around today. And one of those is the Side Hustle Nation blog and the Side Hustle Show podcast, which I started in spring of 2013. So all of the side hustles that you have listed on there, on the blog... Uh, where did you come up with all of that? Is that stuff that you particularly had experience with or subscribers or other listeners? Well, I've done oh, I've tried a different a lot of different things, but no, I haven't tried every single every single thing listed on the site. And that's kind of the beauty of um, the beauty of it is you know being able like doing the podcast, for example, being able to interview people who you know tried stuff I've never even thought of before. And I know it's a great call when I hang up being like, man, I could totally do that. And there are, you know, several ideas I've gotten from uh, from my guests and implemented either in my own business or tried to to do one example that comes to mind is I met a guy whose claim to fame was uh, he earned enough money on Fiverr to buy a house in his in his first year on the platform. And so Fiverr, if you're not familiar, is the marketplace of goods and services where everything starts at five dollars. And I was like, well, what could you possibly sell for five dollars that you know would earn you this kind of money and he's like the keyword is starts at you know it's all about the upsell and so he went on to explain that you know your five dollar thing has got to be you know some pre uh, created asset that you have you know a, a pdf file a audio file video file and if somebody wants your direct time you know they can pay for that in the extras and so i thought that was an interesting way to get started in the the freelancing world so i you know i've played around with fiverr and selling some digital assets i've created and even doing some you know freelance website audits and stuff tons of fun yeah and you know quite frankly that's one of the main reasons 
why I wanted to have you on that, and I saw your TED Talk. Um, you did a TED Talk on entrepreneurial generation, which I thought was brilliant. And I've done many, many side hustles, even while on active duty, even while deployed in Bolivia and Iraq. I had side hustles going on there. Always something going on, and I tell my audience, I tell abundant leaders all the time, even if you're secure in your job, you love what you're doing, you or your significant other, your wife, girlfriend, husband, because I do have female listen, women listening to the, uh, Men of Abundance, you have to have some sort of a side hustle. It's it's a requirement in today's day and age. And that's part of what you talk about in your TED Talk. Can you talk on that a little bit? Sure. I think part of it is you know, the positive, proactive side of saying, look, I, wanna, I just want to use my free time more productively, which is kind of the uh, attitude that I took. And, you know, maybe, maybe hopefully someday this could become a full-time thing. Like if I don't see myself, you know, climbing the corporate ladder and making a, you know, a 30-year career out of being uh, an employee, the, and that's kind of the side that I really like to focus on. The other side that, you know, gets more attention in the news is the kind of reactive, um, more pessimistic side. Like, I need to earn more money given the job market, given, um, you know, the rising cost of living and how wages aren't kind of following that same trajectory. Um, so there's two sides of it, but the, 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 the proactive side is a little more fun to talk about. Say, hey, look, you can be, you can control what you can, can control, be in charge of your own destiny, and at least take some proactive steps for the inevitable you know, job market crash or stock crash that, that may be coming. Yeah, absolutely. Spot on. And then I'll add to that in my personal point of view is that when or if something does happen at work, either you get injured, something completely out of your control, you get injured, you decide or something that is in your control, you just decide you don't want to put up with the, you know, whatever's going on at, at work or something like that, or the job goes under the, the company is purchased or, you know, just completely goes under, you get laid off, whatever the case may be, you have something to fall back on. And then a lot of people don't realize this part, but I took a course in uh, home business ta or small business and home business tax laws. And Congress actually has over a hundred um, tax codes for the home business owner. And there's reason for that because they would rather you put more effort into your home business, into your side hustle, than the alternative is to go downtown to the unemployment office and draw unemployment. They would rather you do that because, one, you're sustaining yourself. Two, you may be hiring additional people and getting other people off, you know, off of, um, you know, back into the job force. And there's so many other reasons for that. So there are tax reasons for it, and you need to look into that. And not all tax, not all tax advisors uh, know this stuff very well because it's not taught. But there's those other reasons that I see as well. Absolutely, the the tax code is very much written by business owners for business owners. So that sounds like a very uh, uncharacteristically smart thing for Congress to do. Yeah, in fact, I had heard this from the guy who was teaching the class. In fact, he said that the, um, and I don't want to get into the whole tax thing, although we are now in that time frame, and it certainly helps me out a lot, and it has for many years since I've always had a side hustle uh, on tax deductions, but the group of taxpayers that have the most deductions are home business owners because of, you know, there's, like I said, the tax codes. Most people, I think I used maybe up to nine of the, of the uh, benefits of having a home-based business that are, you know, there's so many more out there. But, yeah, it's just a great thing to do, and there's so many things you can do. What is one of the craziest side hustles that you've seen? Because I'm so amazed. I'm always very I, – I, I just ask a lot of questions, especially when I find somebody who is making money and especially making a living doing something I never even considered, never even thought was possible. Oh my gosh, there's there's so many stories from the archives. So the Fiverr guy is a great example of that. Yeah. Um, I met a, a gal in San Francisco who hosts Urban Hikes, and she started, you know, just taking people on these three-hour tours around San Francisco. She kind of learned the history of the different neighborhoods. I really liked that one because it's like, hey, this is something that 
anybody could do. And then another guy who called himself the flea market flipper, taking advantage of the age-old business model of buy low, sell high. He's uh, in Orlando, and so you can find him every weekend at the Orlando flea market looking for, in his words, the odd items. So he gave a couple examples of stuff that he found and you know found kind of a disconnect between what it was selling for locally and what he thought he might be able to get for it um, online or on his own. One of them was a prosthetic leg he found for 30 or 40 bucks, turned around and sold it on eBay for like a thousand bucks. Um, another one was uh, like a exercise bike um, that's used in physical therapy offices. So it was like two or three hundred dollars he picked it up for and turned around and flipped it for a couple grand. And just like crazy stuff, like any something that anybody can do, especially if you have you know, kind of an eye for what they, and you know, the, as you practice more, you can get more of an eye for it. Similarly, I met a guy who makes a full time living buying and selling stuff on Craigslist. I think I think he just moved to um, uh, Hilo, so he's not not too far from me anymore. Um, who uh, who else kind of stands out? Oh, one of my favorite ones was. Um, this uh, vending machine business. So this guy in Houston, um, Matt he, Miller. He would, yeah, Matt Miller. Yeah, so he's I don't been know, on the show. Had him on the show. Yes, oh, okay, absolutely. Okay. Great guy. I love that story. Go on and t- tell that story. I don't know if everybody's heard. That so one. yeah, so Matt um, is, you know, having some financial trouble in his corporate job. He's kind of taken to side hustling, like flipping books, but has found it really like labor intensive. So he's like, I got to figure out how to make this a little bit more passive. And so he goes across town. He finds this uh, vending machine, this gumball machine listed on eBay for 36 bucks. The seller happens to be local. So he takes his kids, drives it across town, picks this thing up. And then this is like the hustle part of it, like goes door to door in the strip mall until he finds a karate studio that says, yeah, you can park that machine in our corner. <laughs> you know, that's fine. A couple weeks later, comes back, opens the machine up, quarters, he says, are falling all over the floor, and it's this light bulb moment of, you know, this passive income. So he parlays that into the next machine, into the next machine, and now he's got 2,000 machines or something like it, and he's, you know, built this whole business on the back of it. And so I really, uh, I really admire that story. Yeah, and he took that on further. He's an um, Air Force veteran. He was an Air Force pilot, in fact. Yes. And uh, he took it even further abundant leaders and what he did was he started his own business called spirit vending and he's got these vending machines that he puts in schools and here's the abundant part about it right so he puts these sticker machines in schools and the stickers are specific for that school so that they have the logos you know the all all the all that stuff for the school specific and then a portion of the profits go back into the school as a fundraiser and then he's got, now he's franchised out. Now he's a franchisor, and he's got franchisees all over the place, and he's got somebody out here, last I talked to him, uh, he's working on getting somebody out here in Hawaii. And now he's just having a blast doing that, and I just think it's amazing. So you look at something as simple as gumball machine, starts with one gumball machine that yeah. he bought from a guy, and now it turns into this whole other thing. And you look at somebody else, like, people don't think about this, and they don't know this if they don't follow. I tell people all the time, and I've just recently recorded something, I'm writing a blog on, stop following Gary Vaynerchuk today. And what I mean by that is don't stop following Gary, but stop following him uh, who he is today. Look at him back when he was in school and selling stuff on eBay, you know, going out to to um, yard sales and buying, you know, little trinkets, just like the first guy he was talking about, the guy he was talking about with the, uh, the swap meets and stuff. And he was buying stuff and selling stuff on eBay as a kid. And then he started doing stuff for his dad's wine business on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And then he started doing other stuff. And then now he's got Vayner Media, which is, you know, multi, multi-million dollars over and over and just moved into London, right? So... One little thing like that, if you want it to, can move into something so much bigger. And it's just going to perpetuate you so much further because you're going to start experiencing different things, getting connected with other people, and learning other, you know, just other things and finding out who you are and what you were meant for. And I just I love it. Thanks for sharing all those stories. You bet. It's that, it's that evolution we're talking about. And actually, this was um, a tidbit that Ryan Finley shared, the Craigslist um, reseller. He says, the best opportunities aren't visible until they're already in motion. And at the time, I like that's kind of a hippie thing to say. 
But looking back, it's 100% true, you know, because it's the conversations that you have that might spark a new idea. It's like while you're researching one project, you might stumble upon something else and that, you know, spins off something entirely different. And I I can attest to that 100%. So it doesn't, it almost doesn't matter what you start. It's just like that act of, of staying started and, and keeping keeping in motion. Absolutely. Yeah, very well said. I love that. We're at the point now, actually, where we're going to pay it forward to our abundant leaders. You ready to do that? All right. I'll do my best. <laughs> I know you will. Hey, man, you know here at Men of Abundance, I'm really big on living your life of abundance in family, faith, finances, and fitness. And we have all of these discussions. But one of the things that we've been talking about lately is improving and increasing your finances and there are so many reasons for that that I'm not going to get into today but we're always talking about why it's important and a few ideas about how you can do that but I've never really shared the nuts and bolts about exactly what to do and how to do it so today right now I'm going to share with you one of the resources that I personally use that keeps me on track and up to date with all the latest trends and everything about my personal business. And if you have a business and are struggling at this point or thinking about starting a business, this is a resource that you absolutely must get your hands on. I am talking about a membership site called Freedom. It's spelled F-R-E-E-D-Y-M. This is the Netflix for entrepreneurs because I can't even tell you how many videos are in here for you to learn from. Everything to have to do with entrepreneurship, motivation, personal growth, marketing, money, lifestyle, membership sites, you name it. Everything you need to get started is right here. And since I'm a member, you can get started for just $1. The way to do that and to get to that link is to go to menofabundance.com. Click on the resources tab at the top of the page and scroll down and you will see the Freedom logo, F-R-E-E-D-Y-M. Click on that, take a look, see everything that they have and get started for just $1 and get inside. You're going to be blown away at how much information is in there. I'm loving it. I'm using it and it is greatly assisting me in building my side hustle and building my membership site. So right after this conversation, go to the resources tab at menofabundance.com and go check it out. All right, let's get back to the conversation. So give Men of Abundance one to three actionable steps that you that they can take today. Well, one thing that I'm working on, is, so it's around, you know, we're recording this around the first of the year. And, you know, so I've kind of witnessed a lot of friends and, and colleagues posting their New Year's resolutions or the kind of their, their big uh, picture goals for the year. And for, for whatever reason this year, like I'm having a hard time with that. Like it's easy to pick a number out of the sky. Like I want to make a million dollars. I want to have a New York Times bestseller, like, whatever that is. Those goals are great and they can be really motivating if you can find a way to kind of reverse engineer a path to get there, but I read a post recently that said, I'm giving up my goals and focusing on habits instead, and I'm probably butchering the title of that, but that really kind of, it almost gave me permission in a way to be like, look, you don't need to have some, you know, flight, uh, you know, sky high, you know, resolution or goal for the year. Instead, you know, why don't you just focus on some daily habits and try and make these incremental improvements. So to get back to your point about, you know, one to three actionable items, I'm going to share you know, a couple of these micro habits that are on my list for at least this month, and they may change over time. So one thing that I continue to struggle with is email. I have this, you know, decade long habit of, you know, firing up the computer first thing in the morning, opening up Gmail and saying, what, what surprises do you have for me overnight, internet gods? And it's just immediately starting my day in reactive mode, which is not you know, like even if I just hammered home on like productivity tips, you know, a hundred times, like that's just not smart. It's a really hard habit to break. So my micro habit for this year, one of them is to do one proactive task before diving into my inbox. And I've kind of itemized out my top three priorities the night before. So I immediately know what priority number one is going to be. And it, even if it's just five minutes, even if it's, you know, just a one thing, you know, 
doing that first before diving in to the inbox has been really helpful for me. I know we're only, you know, a few days into the year, but I'm feeling feeling good about that one. And then the other one, or one of the other ones, kind of in the area of health, is to do one push-up a day. You're a former, you know, army guy, so you're probably like one push-up. But it's the act of getting down on the floor. You're probably going to do more than one once you're there. Um, and it's almost too too small to fail in a way. It's like, you know, if you're, and I'm visually tracking this, I'm looking at my, you know, calendar thing with little X's in it, you know, right above my computer right now. And, you know, the act of doing either one of those things isn't, you know, likely to change your life in and of itself. But for me, and I think where the magic is, is in the mental hack of, you know, convincing yourself, like, I'm the person who, you know, takes action, says this is, was something important to me, um, committed to doing it, and I did it. And that's where, um, I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes. Like, I'm, I'm, this is a new experiment for me this year, but trying to figure out where these micro habits kind of trigger in my brain the you know the more the more proactive nature and you know trying to really take take control one one tiny little habit at a time yeah and i like that you pointed out that you don't know where it's going to go because you know and you're just experimenting with it i think it's important to do that to to take a different route and change things up a little bit and 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 uh you know starting with that one push-up knowing that chances are you get down there do one push-up you're probably going to do a couple more Right. I did an experiment a while ago where I called it push-ups to failure. And it was just every day, it was a pretty simple rule. Do as many as you can before your arms give out. And each day, you know, write it down. And then each day, just trying to beat that by one. And and it actually was a really effective experiment because it was like, just eight, you knew you knew the target that you're shooting for. And it was like, I can beat that. And it's just like, you know, slow and steady growth over the course of that month. And I think that kind of 1% improvement mentality is something that can compound over time. And I think I've seen that with the, with the podcast. Look, I'm trying to get, trying to be a better host uh, week in and week out, I'm trying to be a better writer, you know, through this practice week in and week out. Can I get 1% better today? Um, I think that can apply to a lot of different areas, not just fitness. Well, that's a good point that you brought up right there. And I'd like to explore that just a little bit and kind of break norm here. And that is, you know, as you've been, doing your podcast and as you've been writing more how has that changed you not just your skills and and being a better host and being a better uh writer how has that changed you on a personal level or improved you i guess with the with the podcast what i'm trying to do is create a story arc or a narrative like what do i want the listener to get out of this and how can i kind of lead the dance lead the conversation to that outcome um it comes from listening to some other shows and, just, you know, with 45-minute preambles before they get into, like, one actionable tip, it's just, like, getting frustrated with that and trying to create the show that I would want to listen to. But beyond that, the show has been just an unbelievable connector. You know, um, John Corker, I don't know if he's been on your show, but he would, he constantly says, I would do the podcast. Um, he hosts the Smart Business Revolution podcast, I think it's called. And he's like, I would do the show even if nobody listened because of the value of these connections. Like, it gives you this um, this platform, this opportunity to reach out to people you otherwise would have no excuse to call up out of the blue and talk to for half an hour. And that's been, you know, a really powerful thing. Like, a couple years ago, the scale tipped where, you know, my <laughs> the my number of internet friends, you know, started to outpace by probably by a long shot by now, like my number of real life friends. And it's all as a result of kind of putting myself out there in the blog and in the podcast and, you know, just kind of snowballs. The network kind of spiders out from there like, okay, well, who else do you know? And it's it's been really fun. Yeah, that's been my experience too. And that's why I asked that question because since I've been podcasting, it's only been about five months. The connections that I'm making uh, with the conversations that I'm having, every single conversation that I have just helps me grow as a person, helps me grow as a man. And then I just get more and more connections to more people and you know what I never thought about that but the fact of the matter is I do have many close connections with people that I've never met face to face and I mean very close connections we've had some pretty strong conversations um, you know and, and holding each other accountable people I've never met face to face and we're here you know talking like we've known each other for years we'll get on Skype calls together and I it's all because of 
this podcast and the people that I've been able to have amazing conversations with. So thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. Well, on top of that, you're building a really strong connection with listeners. Somebody who's spending 30, 40 minutes with you in their earbuds week after week, you know, that's a much deeper relationship than somebody who spends you know, five minutes or three minutes, like skimming your blog post. And, you know, I've, you know, met people in production. I actually had somebody recognize me locally at the hardware store. They're like, are you Nick? And I was like, you know, mm-hmm. kind of creeped me out, but it was, you know, it's weird. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a really cool medium um, in that sense. It is. And, and the other thing is, is since I listen to your show quite often, it, I feel like I already know you. Not every guest that I get on the show is somebody I listen to, or even somebody that has a podcast. Some of them do not. Many of them do not have podcasts. In fact, most of them don't. But uh, I've either read something that they were doing, and I know a little bit about them. But for those of you like yourself and Chris Ducker, and you know, a few others that I listen to their podcasts on a regular basis, I actually feel like I've known you for quite some time. Because, especially like you, you're so real. And the way you you write, the way you speak, from what I've seen uh, on your uh, content that you've put out there. So it's neat to be able to get on the line and talk to somebody you feel like you already know. And I was, I, I've been doing YouTube videos for quite some time. And on what you're saying, you were recognized. I was in Korea in a Starbucks. And this guy that was in front of me turned around and saw me. He's like, you're, because I'm an insanity instructor. And I used to do, um, I did a video a long time ago on the best, shoe to wear during insanity and oh really okay. yeah and he said and that it's got a lot of views i don't know i haven't even looked at it in a while but it's got a lot of views but he turned around and said i'm here i came to this base today to go to the post exchange to buy that pair of shoes because of the video that you did and i was like dude Whoa. are you freaking kidding me right now yeah i was and the guys that were with me were like dude who are you because <laughs> they didn't know they didn't know <laughs> that's I did awesome this. yeah it was pretty How it's cool. a neat feeling it's and it is kind of cool so, anyhow, um, you already mentioned a few habits and things that you do. Are there any other daily habits that you do that uh, make the biggest impact in your life? Probably the biggest, you know, not daily, but weekly habit has been putting out the show. Um, so it's 200 episodes deep for the last three and a half years. I think there's a compound effect of, you know, having this body of work where, you know, if somebody wants to go back and binge on the archives they absolutely can and i will ask for their uh, understanding you know the first few episodes first probably 50 episodes you know kind of before i you know really hit my hit my stride but there's there's that element of it and just kind of that consistent practice where you know it becomes you know part of people's routine and all like i'm a uh, probably a five-year listener of uh, the Tropical MBA podcast. I know it's coming out every Thursday, and it's just you know kind of a part of my. Hey, what are the, what are these guys talking about this week? You know, and I think it's hopefully it's becoming the same for listeners of the Side Hustle Show. Yeah, I'm a Side Hustle Show listener. What is that one you mentioned? The Tropical MBA. Yeah, Tropical MBA podcast, formerly the Lifestyle Business Podcast. Um, they you know, and then recently this year, um, they've kind of really stepped up their game in terms of production quality, which has been, you know, of course, inspired me to do better on that front as well. So I think those guys do uh, do a nice job. Yeah, I'll go check that out because I'm always looking for something. You know, I, I don't know that I need any more podcasts to listen to, but <laughs> I'm always looking to study what other people are doing just to kind of get an idea of you know uh, how other guys are doing, how other shows are doing, and you know what they're doing different. Yeah. Now, what other now what other shows do you like? I, I want to interrupt. You know, I'll de- side rail this thing for a minute. No, that's fine. For me, the ones I listen to on a regular basis, I got to talk back in the mic. Are um, you Panor? I listen to Pat Flynn. See, Pat and Chris Ducker are really close friends. They used mm-hmm. to have a podcast that they haven't done in a while. Uh, the One Day Business Breakthrough was absolutely one of my favorite podcasts because they're so. They, it's Pat and Chris having a conversation, breaking down somebody else's business usually an online business because they can look at the website and stuff like that, but uh, brick-and-mortar businesses as well. Uh, I listen to, since I'm a veteran, uh, I listen to um, Veteran Resource Podcast and okay. uh, amazing, amazing podcast. So much information for veterans. Uh, so Smart Passive Income by Pat Flynn, Ask Pat, uh, Slow Hustle, once in a while I listen to that one, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Success 101 is is a good one i listened to lewis howes the uh, school of greatness okay. 
And another one that I really like quite a bit that I get a lot of information from for my show actually is Knowledge for Men. And then, of course, uh, the side hustle. Those are the top ones I listen to. And so what book would you recommend to our abundant leaders and why? Books. Um, gosh, my reading has really uh, taken a dive since uh, having, a, having a baby uh, early, early last year. Um, one that I really like kind of solidified a mindset shift for me was The Go-Giver by Bob Berg, where he talks about really leading with value, trying to be as helpful as you can. The the businesses that I've had succeed all have that in common, and the businesses that I've had fail all kind of led with, um, you know, money first. Or I thought this was a you know a unique, you know, profit opportunity to go after versus like you know what's what's really the unique value that I could bring to this. Like I started, um, you know, one of the projects that flopped. Um, spectacularly was like this wine not even spectacularly like it just died a quiet death to the corner of the internet it was like a wine uh related site because we kind of live near wine country and it's like well, i don't know anything about wine like i don't care about it like there was no it was completely like you know me too content like there's no unique reason for anybody to visit this it was like just a desperate plea for somebody to come and click on my affiliate links mm -hmm. and because of that you know i had no you know real drive to keep it going and it was just um uh, but going back to the point about, you know, the best opportunities aren't visible until you're already in motion. It was during the research for that site that I kind of stumbled upon somebody who was doing really well in that in that wine space. And I was like, how could I pivot on this guy's idea to a different vertical and turn it into a really good project? Yeah, that, and that's a very good point that you brought up there. If you're not passionate about it, it's going to come out and it's probably going to end up dying. And that is a good book. I haven't read the entire book, but I've read... Uh, parts of it I do need to get back into it because it is really the premise of what we talk about here at men of abundance or one of many anyway so and we'll have that listed in the show notes at men of abundance.com so based on the side hustle do you know I want to ask you this question and that is what is has anybody ever come to you what has stopped people from starting a side hustle even if they know what their side hustle is what they're good at what they would like to do what do you find that is stopping people from doing that? The big three that I hear are time, money, and ideas. So in this case, it sounds like the person already has an idea, which is you know probably the biggest hurdle to get over of you know how <laughs> what my business is even going to be. So if you already have that, you're down to kind of time and money. And the time equation really is a big challenge because you know our, t our time is limited you know we only have mm -hmm. 24 hours in a day but at the same time it's uniquely egalitarian in that everyone only has 24 hours in the day so one thing that i would probably recommend if you're in that position of like i seriously do not have any spare minutes you know track your time you know every every minute there's probably an app that'll do this i've used one called toggle in the past which at least does it for you while you're you know at your computer t-o-g-g-l the and they probably have a smartphone app to do it as well but even just like in a in an excel spreadsheet you know i you know i'm starting this task you know start time stop time you know any notes you want to write about that and what i found is there's a lot of like slush time in there you know where it's like i'm waiting for this meeting to start or i'm commuting and you know how could i I, I used to drive, you know, 500, 700 miles a week for my day job before I like ever discovered podcasts or audiobooks. It's like I just would kill to have all of that wasted windshield time back. Like, how much could I have learned instead of listening to country radio or you know blue collar comedy on satellite radio? Just you know, all that wasted time. Um, so uh, the time thing is is a common challenge, but I think it's uh, overcomable. The even if even if you can just carve out 15 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, like make that a date with yourself and put it on the calendar and kind of commit to moving moving forward. It's like that one push up. It's like okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start, and it may not seem like I'm gonna make a lot of progress, but the compound effect of doing that day after day definitely adds up over time. That's something I actually learned from my brother. He's like, look. I have a goal, like he's you know working crazy hours, but he has on his like little tracker sheet five minutes. I have to work on my website five minutes. I have to work on my business, you know, five minutes. And of course, once you're doing that five minutes, you probably, you know, can extend that to 15 or half an hour, whatever it may be. But like that was his kind of micro goal for doing it. Um, on the money front, 
I mean, plain and simple, like don't spend a lot of money until you have validated the idea there's lots of different business models you could start for for next to another like the podcast is a great example of you know a hundred dollar startup you know the mic at the time when i bought it was probably 50 bucks and you know then you had to get some media hosting and it was like a very inexpensive experiment to begin and just about all of my experiments and all of the businesses have started that way you know something doesn't have to be expensive to get off the ground. And if something does look expensive, for example, the shoe site initially cost 10 grand to develop, but I didn't plunk down that investment until I kind of validated with these little text ads, you know, to, to see if anybody would buy. Exactly. You want to get proof of concept before uh, you put a lot of money into it. And that's where I find a lot of people actually end up getting very discouraged and in a lot of trouble quite frankly because they just think they have this great idea and it is a great idea but is it good is it a great idea to the marketplace are people going to buy it right. uh, and that makes a big big difference one book that i'll recommend uh that will help you with that is a book by pat flynn uh, will it fly uh, it's specifically designed to help you decide if what your great idea is just because it's a great idea doesn't necessarily mean it's a great business. So that book will certainly help you make that decision. Yeah, step by step by step, how to uh, how to validate it. Absolutely. So one last question for you, and that is, what does living a life of abundance mean to you, Nick? You know, I think it goes back to you know having that freedom over your own schedule and then doing work that helps other people. And I guess that's kind of a weak definition because that's like any business ever you know, it must help other people or else it doesn't really exist. But that's kind of what I aim to do and just feel very grateful to be able to, to do this work every day. No, that's a great answer. I absolutely love it. So we're going to close this up. I really appreciate your time. I'm glad we were finally able to get on the line and have this conversation. Uh, but before we let you go, leave us with a parting piece of guidance in any way that we can get in contact with you and get more of you. You bet. So a parting piece of guidance that I like to give is to think like a scientist. And by that, I mean, become a side hustle scientist. Because, you know, think like an experimenter, adopt the experimenter's mindset where, you know, the scientist in the lab never really fails. A, a test tube might blow up in your face, but, you know, it either kind of proves or disproves your hypothesis, probably disproves if it is blowing up. But that kind of lessens the sting of the inevitable failures that come. Like starting a business is hard, but if you kind of frame it, in at least in your mind, as, hey, look, I'm going to give this a shot, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever kind of you're, you're comfortable with to kind of give yourself time to find a customer, see if you like doing this, um, see if that's something that excites you. And if it doesn't work, yeah, you can chalk it up as an experiment and kind of reevaluate and move on to the next one. Best place to find me, the home base is at SideHustleNation.com. If you hit SideHustleNation.com slash ideas, you'll have a, a constantly updated laundry list of part-time business ideas that you can start today. And uh, we'd love to see you over there. Perfect. I appreciate you sharing that. One thing I do want to mention, and I get caught up in this as well, uh, Abundant Leaders, when you go to Nick's site, SideHustleNation.com, be very careful. <laughs> because there are so many good ideas that you're going to want to do this one and then you're going to say, I can do that one, I want to do that one. Find something that you feel will truly resonate with you. Pretty much everything there is already proof of concept. It's working for somebody. So don't worry about that part. Just find something that you know will resonate with you, something you can do, and stick with that one. Uh, that way you don't get too sidetracked and you're not diluting yourself too much. I see some people, they try to do three, four, five different side hustles. And if you were to just focus on one, just focus on one, you could truly get to where you want to go uh, financially, personally, abundantly, and get that freedom that you're looking for. Any thoughts on that, Nick, before we close up? One, one thing at a time. Definitely focus on something that I struggle with, but I... Me too. E easier said than done, but I'll, I'll agree with you on It is, one. it is. And, and focus is follow one course until success. <laughs> and I've already given John Lee Dumas credit for that one, so I'm going to use that as mine now. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right, man. It was fun. Uh, I look forward to many more conversations, and I look forward to your other episodes, and I look forward to some feedback from this show when it posts, and I'll let you know when it does. You bet, man. We'll see you soon. All right, brother. Take care. 
All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Tomorrow, we are going to have the conversation with Chris Gillibo. He is the guy, I will remind you, that has traveled to every single country around the world, documented it, made money from a blog, wrote a couple books. We're just going to have an amazing conversation and lots of great information for you guys to work off of. Once again, make sure you focus. Go, when you go look at these sites and you go start thinking about what you want to do, even if you already have something, you're going to find some amazing ideas that you know you're going to be able to implement and start building on a business today. But focus on one. Make sure you get that one done right before you move on to anything else. And if you need any help, just reach out to me, man. That's what I'm here for. Now, go out and live your life of abundance and make sure to pay it forward. That's all for today, Abundance Leaders. For more about our guests and the powerful information we shared with you today, be sure to sign up for our mailing list at menofabundance.com. We appreciate your time and look forward to hanging out with you on our next episode. So until then, be sure to pay it forward and live your life of abundance.